Hey guys, welcome back to another lab, Lab 2. Today we're going to be in the Object Studio and talking about a Blue Prism best practice, Verify, Do, Confirm. When a digital worker is doing your automations, we first want to make sure that we're on the correct page of a website or even that the ERP system you're using, or whatever application it is, has properly loaded. Hence the verify part, right? Now we can use some things in Blue Prism like intelligent wait stages. We can drag and drop those onto our canvas. You'll see a little bit later, but this will verify again that we're on that correct screen where we need to be, or rather where we need the digital worker to be. Then we'll do the work. Well, the digital worker will do the work. That's the second part. And then the digital worker will confirm that it did complete it. Hence this accurate result that your automation got completed. Now, this is all in the lab notes. So please, friendly reminder again, as always, go ahead and take a look at those and I'll see you in the interactive client once you're done reading that. Cheers. Welcome back, lab two. Let's crack on. We're back in the interactive client here on the studio tab and I'm in my objects as you can see. So not processes, objects, back again. And this time, go ahead and open up lab two object, right? So double click that and away we go. Now let's maximize this for a little better viewage and we're gonna go to our search page here. Now, a friendly reminder, this is not the lab we did in lab one. This is a one that has already been pre-built for us just to speed up. That way we don't have to go back and do some of the same exercises at the same time. And plus we can incorporate some new concepts. So we are on our search page right here. And in this lab, we're gonna start with the usage of blocks. So go ahead on the toolbar to the left and you're gonna to want to grab two of these and not the read stage like I'm doing, the block stage there. So we can get this over and we'll click and we're gonna drag a block around here. Now make sure you read the guides on this too before obviously doing the labs as always, but in this instance it is really important as there's some key concepts around blocks that I'm not gonna talk too much on because it's already in the documentation. But really fast, this is really where we're gonna get around making objects easy to read. That way changes can be resolved quickly. So we'll get in there. Um, let's continue on. So we've got our two blocks here, as you can see, block one, block two. And let's add some names to these. So the first one is do. This is the uh, verify do confirm that is mentioned in those guides. And now we'll go ahead and change this one to data items. So you should have your two blocks renamed just like so. Now we're gonna introduce a concept called attach. So you may have noticed that there's another page over here called attach, and we want to make a reference to that. So go ahead and grab your pointer and go ahead and highlight all three of these and just bring this down like so. And we're gonna go ahead and drag a page over here. So let's get our page stage right here and put it right there. Now we're going to want to create a reference to an existing page, and this one is going to be our attach page. Now what an attach page is, if you want to click, you can see more in depth over here, but what an attach page is, is it makes sure the digital worker is on the right application. For instance, say you have multiple applications open, SAP, Microsoft Word, Outlook. Just like a human being, you want to have the application that you're working with in front. So imagine clicking on you know, Microsoft Excel or here, like if I wanted to work with the inner client, I'm bringing forward. I want to make sure that I'm actually attached, right, hence the name, to said object or application. So we have our new attach page right here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and link those like so. And now that we're attached, so we're on the right application, we wanna make sure that we're on the correct page. We don't just want a digital worker clicking everywhere or being on the wrong page or making sure that it you know, hasn't loaded or anything like that. So this is where we introduce the concept of intelligent wait stages. So go ahead and drag an intelligent wait stage down on your application like this. And we'll go ahead and click on this first circle right here. Now we're gonna call this, is there a search bar? And we wanna make sure that again, we're on the right page of said website. So in this instance, we're gonna use our pre-spied elements. Notice there's a third one here. Again, this was already filled out in the labs for you. We've already introduced the concept of spying in the last lab. Uh, so go ahead and click search bar right there. And condition, we just wanna check. 
So we want to make sure that that search bar on that marketwatch.com website is there. That way we know, again, we're on the correct page. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And you should see now this uh, text appear right here. So go ahead and link your attached page to the left one and then the bottom one on the uh, down here in the circle. And let me hit the pointer here and we'll just move that over there. A little perfectionist. There we go. But if we see, so the happy path here, is there a search bar? It would be yes. And then we go ahead and do our work. Hence the block again, do, right? But what happens if maybe your internet is slow, the page hasn't loaded? Where does the automation go in this step? So we're going to introduce a exception right here. This is where we get into exception management. So go ahead and drag this over and link it like so. And now double click and we're going to give this exception say that no search bar had appeared now there's several different types of exceptions whether it's a business exception maybe like an invoice is missing a purchase order maybe it's a system exception you can have exceptions that are unique to your business line as you can see here there's several pre-filled out but in this example we're going to say no search bar and there's some really good text in the guide around uh, exception properties so go ahead and check that out especially if you want to have you know a screen capture like uh, maybe you want to get a screenshot of, of what happened why an automation broke for some reason uh, maybe there was an update or something like that so you could get that intel right again really starting to get into the resiliency uh, component of your digital workforce so go ahead and click OK and yours should now start to look a little like this now keep in mind there is the answer key as well already pre-built so if you're stuck or you just want to double check everything you can certainly do that and now we're going to drag a new block around here and this is going to be our verify again this is the verify do confirm concept in the guide that we mentioned and we're going to go ahead and change our text to line i'm sorry our color not text um, so it should start to look a little like this okay so we've got our two here, but now we need our final piece. And the final piece is the confirm, right? Verify, do, confirm. We've got two of the three. So let's go ahead and knock out this third one. And in this case, in our application modeler, again, we have this price over here pre-spied for you. So if you're like, wait a second, we didn't do that in the first lab. That's correct. This is pre-filled out, but this is where we're going to do our confirm piece. Okay. So I just did want to point that out. And now we're going to want to scroll down. Let's move our end stage out a little bit. And we're going to add one more intelligent weight stage like this. And of course, you can change that text back to black. So it is actually readable. Or maybe you want to leave it in green. Depends on you. So let's go back into our intelligent weight stage properties and this time drag in price. So if you remember when we were typing in that Disney stock ticker, it loaded and the new page had the stock price. So we'll make sure that that price is actually on there again, that we're on the correct page we should go ahead and hit uh, check exist. And we can say this uh, has price loaded. Now this can be any, again, any doesn't have to be word for word like this. You can call it just confirm or et cetera. Um, but you get the gist of it. Okay. So you should have this and let's go ahead and make this a little bigger. Oops. And we'll go ahead and grab a, an exception over here. And this one will just say price did not load. And again, make this a system exception. Not load or up here. There you go. We'll hit OK. Let's do our linking. So come down here. There you go. And last but not least, let's get a block around these. Have to have our confirm block. Right, Corey? Right. All right. There it is. And we'll call this one confirm and changes maybe to red or orange or what have you. So it should look something like this. So we've got our verify. Okay, we're on the correct page. Let's go ahead and do the work. So we're going to enter that search for that stock ticker, push the search button that we're going to make sure has the price loaded. Okay, now, of course, you can go ahead and hit play on this. Uh, hit your reset maybe first. Go ahead and hit play. Uh, you may have to have your browser open already on this. Uh, so if, as you can see, there's no launch or anything on this, but you could simply click launch right here from, or in your application modeler and test that out yourself as well. 
But for now, that is lab two. So let's hit it to the summary.